Now time for the weekly with New 6 Morning Anchor, Justin Warmuth. This is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmuth. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Justin Mormouth. Come August, voters in Orange County will be electing a new mayor for the first time in eight years. Current mayor Teresa Jacobs is out on term limits. She has formally announced that she's running for Orange County School Board chair and three candidates have filed paperwork to fill her seat. They are Sheriff Jerry Demings, Commissioner Pete Clark and businessman Rob Penapenso. This morning, two of those candidates will lay out their vision for the county and why they feel they're the best person for the job, starting with Orange County Commissioner Pete Clark. You've been an Orange County Commissioner since 2012. Correct. Why did you feel this was the right time to run for mayor? Well, with, with the Mayor Jacobs leaving office, of course, with term limits, mm -hmm. um, if you think about what could possibly happen, look at the scenario that we could possibly have three new commissioners. I don't think that will happen, but mm -hmm. and we will have a new mayor. And I think at uh, this point in time where things are really going pretty well, you know, if you look at the economy and what's going on, things are going well. But, you know, we have the homestead exemption uh, item coming. Uh, there's a lot of issues kind of underneath this Lamborghini mm -hmm. we're driving right now that we need to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been on the board for five and a half years now. Uh, worked with the county for a number of years, so I know the I know the lay of the land, and I think at this point in time, somebody seasoned, someone who knows what's kind of in the pipeline, knows the budget very very well, would be the the logical choice to lead the county. I know stopping the epidemic of human trafficking was a priority mm -hmm. for you, yes. has been a priority for mm -hmm. you, as a, as a commissioner. How do you hope to further that as uh, as becoming mayor? If you look at, <clears throat> at kind of the underlying causes, and you know, for decades we've been putting a lot of money out for programs, and yeah, they're all well, well intentioned, but the underlying cause for all this is poverty. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a conservative guy, right? You know, and, and I kind of know where government needs to stop and look at the private sector take o take over. But always, if you really drill down, you get to the root of it is poverty. Mm -hmm. And within poverty, you have certain things that happen, and um, it causes certain people would be vulnerable. And trafficking, of course, anybody can be enticed in trafficking, but I think they do prey on folks who, who maybe come up in some circumstances that are a little less than we might enjoy. Mm -hmm. So the thing is to attack poverty at the root cause, because if you do that, then you, you start attacking homelessness, mental health issues, those things that when you compress them all together, make people, and make especially the young ladies that are recruited in, and if you watch the film of these things happening, it's like an amazing thing, because mm -hmm. these recruiters can, and you have five, five young ladies, they can point at the one they can recruit. Right. So you really get them in the circumstances where the self-esteem's there, they're not preyed on, they don't have the, the, the issues that make them vulnerable, then we start making some impact. And then the other thing is to make the Johns pay. Mm -hmm. If you look at Scandinavian models, um, when you get caught, if you're a John, out. And you got a whole new place to live mm -hmm. <laughs> for, for a long time. What is the current state of, of human trafficking in Orange County? You know, it's, um, you know, people say, you know, Florida's number three, Orange County's number three. Mm -hmm. But we have some really phenomenal organizations here like uh, Florida Abolitionists, the Greater Orlando Human Trafficking Task Force. And what it allows, I think it allows people to report more than maybe other areas do. Mm -hmm. So the activity may be similar to other areas, but I think our reporting is much, much better, much, much higher. We just opened a, the first shelter in Florida for adult trafficking victims. And I think we've had 10 or 11 uh, victims come in already. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very proud of the Orange County Board of County Commissioners and for letting me do this and, and helping me do it, especially with the mayor. Mm -hmm. And it's a testament to how much uh, we're paying attention to it. So um, that's a, a key because if you can get the victims into a place where they feel safe, and that's the first thing is feel safe, then law enforcement and the, uh, the, 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 the you know, state attorneys and the rest of them can come in and maybe hopefully have them help mm -hmm. prosecute. Transportation also seems to be <laughs> yeah. a, a, big, a big question. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of folks want to know about transportation. Mm -hmm. What can we expect Orange County's transportation to look like in five or 10 years? In five or 10 years, um, if we don't solve the east-west issue, um, you know, I always kind of kid, if you want to go to DeBerry, we can get you there. Right. And you might want to just come back, I'm not sure, but now with Meadow Woods and going down south with SunRail, and you know, SunRail, you, you hate it or you know, you'd love it or hate it. You know, right, there's, it no, there's, no, there's no tweener on that. You that's know. true. Yeah. It's either a boondoggle or a boon. <laughs> right. And if you look at some of the stations, it's been a boon. You know, around the mm -hmm. hospitals mm -hmm. and you know, the, the most used stations down Pine Castle, actually, the Pine Castle station. Mm -hmm. But we have trouble going east-west. So we need to really look at 
how we can move passengers from Sunrail east-west and a lot of that may be buses, but not just the kind of buses we have now. We have mm -hmm. some bus rapid transportation projects coming where you can have kind of express buses mm -hmm. and, you know, make it really nice commuter buses uh, to get to the points where we could have maybe some, some, um, some stations where, you know, people, you know, the younger folks, they love Uber, Lyft, mm -hmm. and have places where that could help them along with the journey. So I would see kind of this, you know, the spine of it is going to be SunRail, mm -hmm. unless it folds, which, you know, in Orange County, we're, we're budgeted, we have it budgeted, so everybody says, how much is it going to cost? Well, it's budgeted in our budget for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for when it happens. But at that point in time where we can get it down south, the key connection is the airport to the convention center, then it becomes an economic engine. And that's where people, like in my district now, who live in, in um, kind of the Pine Castle area, down in uh, Sky Lake, mm -hmm. if we can get them connected to the big employment centers, then you know it opens up just just the world to them. So, in 20 years, you know I could see SunRail you know, if we don't ditch it, and, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and we got a lot of money in it. So, you know, kind of kind of the spine going north south, mm -hmm. and then we have the the airport connection and all aboard Florida connecting down from Miami, which would be kind of. Uh, interesting because mm -hmm. yeah. that gets us to the coast actually it gets us over to Bavard County it does and um, and and they work out these rapid transits mm -hmm. east and west then I think we have something cooking because and I think that just the influx of people who mm -hmm. have moved here and I think that's why we're seeing the I4 ultimate project it needed to be done sure. I know it's it's a tough process to live through mm -hmm. it but you know you, you see the uh, these other big cities and they have public transportation sure. as their key way to get around because mm -hmm. Uh, simply, there's just too many cars on sure. the road. So I feel like that's where Orange County, like you were pointing at, is headed. Right. So we need to, and development needs to not precede infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something we've done in, in, the, in the past is development causes infrastructure issues. So we need to plan out our infrastructure, plan out our roads. So we know about Pete Clark, the commissioner. Mm -hmm. What does Pete Clark do outside of work? What do you like to do? Take a nap. Take a no, nap. No, no, I was sunning out in your window. No, I'm not a kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, no um, you know, my wife and I, we, um, the, both of our boys are older. One's in law enforcement. The other is, uh, he's a, he just started a day as a new job doing some uh, martial arts training mm -hmm. as an instructor. So they're, they're cool. They're, they're really great. So we don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. Now we like going to the beach and you know, kind of uh, lounging. And I play in a classic rock band, oh, which, yeah. is, which is kind of fun. What do you play? Uh, rhythm guitar. There you go. And we know four chords. We're not a three-chord band. Okay. We know four, so we're really good musicians. <laughs> yeah, well, that's <laughs> so, all you need, right? That's right, four power chords, and we're there. That's it. That's all you yeah, really need. So, uh, you know, really love doing that. It's really kind of cool. relaxing, you know, mm -hmm. practice once a week. And we, we get out and play eh, maybe once a month or so, mm -hmm. a couple little pubs here and there. And we really have a great time, so it's really, really relaxing. Do you feel at all, and you do have some rec name recognition, but do you feel at all that you're at a disadvantage with Sheriff Jerry Demings on the ballot as well? Well, you know, when we did the first poll, it was like, you know, I should just go back and be a commissioner. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. you know, has name recognition. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I remind everybody there was a presidential election where somebody had a lot of name recognition too, and mm -hmm. it turned out different than everybody thought. My first campaign in 2012, um, I was outspent seven to one, mm. 200,000 to 30,000. Um, everybody told me I was nuts, and I agreed with them, but I, <laughs> I did it anyway. <laughs> and, but I worked hard, and I'm gonna work hard on this one. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're getting out there. I'm knocking on doors. Um, I. You know, I have a lot of folks I know. You now, when you're commissioner, you know, you, you meet a lot of folks. Right. But I knew a lot of people before some of my work in the community. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I can go where a lot of candidates can't go. And a big thank you to Commissioner Clark for coming in. Still to come, Sheriff Jerry Demings and how he'll use what he learned as sheriff and apply it as mayor and the pointers his wife, Congresswoman Val Demings, is giving him. Keep it here.